and pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I say it the way I guess I must have learned it when I was little and I just keep going with it. I'm just giving a little introduction, so if you want a minute to get yourself settled, that'd be great. All right, this is the USS Silverside Submarine Museum. As you know, you all had to come through our building just to give you a little background on who we are. You had to come through our building, it's filled with exhibits. We also have a Coast Guard cutter. She's from 1927, served in Prohibition, World War II, as well as just doing Coast Guard duties, and now and then as a training vessel, and now just here for our kids to learn things. Any confiscated weapons go on board? I can't promise to tell you that. We know where it's hidden. <laughs> and of course, we have the Silverside Submarine. The mission of the, United, of the USS Silverside Submarine Museum is to honor the men and the women of the military, preserve military history, and provide experiences that educate the public about past and present military history and technology. One of the ways we do that is series like this. We are about part way through. We will be hearing shortly from the president, I believe, of women in combat. And then there are a couple of other ones that are coming up in the near future. We're doing these every Wednesday at noon through August 11th. At the Silversides, we like to tell the story of military history, the big story of military history, through the experiences of the many individuals that make up the military. And we're always surprised at the stories underneath the stories, but it was ordinary individuals that come together and together accomplish something extraordinary. We like to, as we've grown, we've learned to see that their soldiers, their sailors, their airmen, their coast guardsmen, there's Marines. But as I look at this picture and think about today's presentation, one of the things I think of is, yes, this tells the story of the, of the military, but there's one thing noticeably absent in this group of pictures. These are all service men, and not that their accomplishments weren't wonderful, but most people think, when they think of military contr contributions of the women, they think of the hometown front, the Rosie, the Riveter, people like that picking up where the men who went off to serve left the jobs behind. But there's a lot more to that. Currently, we have women serving in every branch of our military. And it started way back, come on, come on, come on. work with me. Uh-oh, I can always do this from the back. As far as we know, going back to the Revolutionary War, that's the first time we had a woman that was putting herself at risk for her country. She was a spy, the number 355 was used, and we didn't have a lot of information on her, but the code words that were used at the time gave every indication that she was indeed a woman. There are many instances throughout our military history where the women who wanted to serve their country disguised themselves as men so that they could serve because they wouldn't have been accepted as women in the military. It was Mary Walker, an American um, abolitionist and a Civil War surgeon. She's the first, and as far as I can tell, the only woman to ever receive the Medal of Honor. So despite the fact that many women have served since then, it's been pretty rare. In 1901, Congress established the Army Nurse Corps, and then 1908, the Navy Nurse Corps, which of course many women served in, as well as men. During World War II, there were approximately 400,000 women that served in officially non-combat roles. Some were taken a prisoner of war, some were killed, which tells you that they were all putting themselves at risk. But after the war, they were no longer permitted to remain in the military. It wasn't until 1948 when the Women's Armed Services Integration Act was signed that women were allowed to be in the military all the time. So women served in Korea, mostly there they were in mass units and aboard ships. I'm sorry my clicker is going so slowly, because I know you didn't really come to hear me. Come on. Come on. In, in Vietnam there were over 10,000 women serving, including Commander Elizabeth Barrett, who became the first woman to hold a command in a combat zone. A couple of other firsts, in 1978, women were serving on non-combat ships. 1991, they began to fly in combat and serve on combat ships. A couple of other firsts, 
1998, commanding a warship. 2004, commanding a fighter squadron. 2008, not until 2008 to have a woman receive the rank of four-star officer. Of course, in our museum, it always comes back to submarines. So it wasn't until 2010 that women were permitted to serve in submarines. And in 2012, we had the first unrestricted line officer to qualify in submarines. I'm zipping through this very quickly again. I know you didn't come to hear me. Now, some women serve a long, 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 long time, all the training, everything they do. But they really wait a long, long, long time to get the opportunities of their male counterparts. As you know, this young lady, just went up to space after all that time training uh, military pilots and having every qualification to do so. But the question for today becomes, so after serving their country, what comes next for these women? Everybody who served in the military, and we've seen quite a few come through here, sometimes the adjustment to civilian life is a little different. It's not as rigid, it's not as defined. And for women, so much of the time it's always assumed that they wouldn't have been the veterans and I imagine it's even more difficult to just adjust to a civilian life after the military. So, I don't really know all the details of what comes next, but we have Lorraine Rodriguez here with WIG for all women veterans and I'm sure she can give you a lot of information on things that are available for women who did serve and what comes after their military service. So. You guys probably didn't come to hear me speak, and I don't really know a whole lot more than what I've told you, so I am willing to hand over the microphone and give it to the professionals. And if it hadn't been now, I was going to make you all participate in a sing-along. I have the medley of military anthems, and you know, have you sing, it has the words, you can stand for your branch and all that. Do you want a microphone? I don't know if you like it. She has a presentation. I do have a presentation of slides. Okay. And no backstage people. I know you have somebody fun to talk to. Can everybody hear me without the microphone? Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. If I can turn it off. I just got to get my slides up. Yeah. My name is Lorraine Rodriguez. I'm the president of the board for WEED, a female veteran group. I can't hear you, ma'am. I will I'll speak up. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My name is Lorraine Rodriguez. I am the president of the board for WEED, for all women veterans. We are not just for veterans injured, women veterans injured in combat. We are for all women veterans and service members. I just got to get my slides up. What's the name of yours? It's in the... A creation design with love folder, oh, and, and then in the wink folder. Okay. Wink folder. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> down. <laughs> All right. And then it is the presentation July twenty-first. Every, everything these days depends on the computer. In yeah. Yeah. Sometimes giving it to them. Yeah. Who remembers the Entrad girls with the big cards? <laughs> Intervision. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Or even Bob Dylan with all the his cards. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Patty. He's still there. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Watch the cold. All right. I think you're good to go. About us, we were founded in 2014, and at the time our goal is to keep, is to help bring awareness to the issues facing women veterans <clears throat> nationwide while providing a space where they can live, laugh, and readjust to life after service, while also identifying the tribe of women veterans who have their six. In other words, the ones that they'll trust. We offer we offer support and mostly with outreach. We have an outreach coordinator that we do pay. Um, we get a grant from Health West and that is how she is paid. She is um, not only our outreach coordinator and usually where she will see a lot of the people and make the contacts and then we go in and we sign the women up, but she is a military sexual trauma resource specialist for us because there are a lot of women who have dealt with the military sexual trauma and she gets the referrals to Health West and from Health West we deal very closely with them 
We offer support groups for female veterans. We have a support group that is MST and one that is not MST, which MST is a military sexual trauma. We have on Mondays, or on Wednesdays, I'm sorry, from noon until one, we have our peer support group, which is over the phone, and that is for military sexual trauma. And then the one for the non-military sexual trauma women veterans is Wednesdays from seven to 8 p.m and that's on Zoom. And that's just called our Wind Down Wednesday, where you just go and you chat about how your week went and meet new women veterans. And this is going slow. Uh, our machines are not happy today. <laughs> and that happens. I didn't see where she pointed it where it was. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Our mission is to promote physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health of female veterans who want to join our organization. With more awareness, we believe more women will have access to the proper health care, the proper treatment for military sexual trauma, and even the proper treatment when going to the VA facility, among other things because women are not always treated the greatest at the VA. Oh, there we go. We're, our, one of our missions also is to educate the nation. The other aspect of our organization is to educate the nation on the needs and challenges that female warriors have had to face, as well as to provide the solutions to family members, friends, and employers that they need to welcome these women back into society with open arms and also make the female warrior feel more welcome. The services we offer are we have an annual retreat and it's Camp Courage and of course due to COVID last year we didn't do any of it but we have Camp Courage which is a three-day retreat it's held in Grant it is where we've had women from Texas we've had women from Maryland join us we've had women from Virginia and we just go and it's a way to get to know more female veterans or our sisters our tribe and we enjoy crafts we try our hand at pour painting which some of them it was kind of a very messy hand but we competed in a few team competitions just little races with Hot Wheel cars and different kind of things we also had a competition of who could, what team could cook over the fire the best. A few little relay races with different kind of Oreos was one of them. We just did different things to have fun. A lot of trusting exercises and just relaxing. That's, there's nothing, nothing you have to do. If you do not feel it like participating for the day, you stay in the cabin where you were and you don't have to come out and join us. Are we... Reclaimed Retreat is for military sexual trauma. That's a six day retreat and that's held in Will well Wind Lodge up in Custer. That is a more intensive one where we have counselors come in and it's very structured. They, they have um, group sessions. There's some one-on-one -on -one in there and they do different, different kind of activities that are more structured than just the uh, grant three day retreat. We have meetups and we've had them in Lansing. We've had them in the outskirts of Detroit, um, Grand Rapids, and of course in Muskegon. And what we do is we just go maybe to a local pub and most of the time we'll go in and whatever place we go to, they will give us like free drinks or free pizza or whatever to go there. And then we have painting workshops that we might have at somebody's house or another organization might say, well, you know what, have it here. Like we've had stuff at the conference room in the VA in Muskegon. We also have gone to plays, music venues. We went to a concert for, who was the, Amy Grant. 
and Brian White, Michael W. Smith. Michael w. Smith sorry. And we went to that and it was free for the female veterans. And we went to dinner before we did that concert. So just different stuff. Our community outreach, um, we have done themed community resource fairs. We've donated care bags for female veterans. We've taken them to every woman's place. We've um, worked closely with Health West. They are our biggest sponsor with uh, their veteran re representative. And we participate in the local community and neighborhood events. We have done events at Buell Park. We have done, we did bike time. We participated in the veteran tent at bike time this last weekend. The weekend before was the Hay Coop car show to, for suicide awareness. We have done that. Um, Hackley Park, we will be going to coming up. Um, we are essentially, we're a resource hub for female veterans. We serve as a resource hub to our female veterans by providing better access to information that can turn to transform their struggles into a thriving life. A lot of them don't know where to go. A lot of them don't admit that they're veterans. Some of them you have to, they have a lot of trust issues. So some of the females, it's how you approach, are you a veteran or did you serve or a lot of female veterans will think that they're not really a veteran because they didn't see combat, which that is not true at all. Our annual empowerment awards, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of the HER2, we did two years ago. Um, but it is, we celebrate the achievement of extraordinary women and outstanding organizations in a semi-formal elegant evening affair. And last year, or two years ago, sorry, we had it at the Elsie Walker Arena, down on the ice, we had that there. But it's the HER2 Military Women of Excellence Awards, and they're designed to recognize outstanding performance by individuals who have or are currently serving in the military and have been identified by their peers as having consistently excelled in their leadership positions and demonstrated integrity and a strong commitment to embody the HER2 standards, which are caregiver we had one year we had a caregiver who won um it's anybody who personally deals with veterans on a daily basis female veterans on a daily basis um how can you help us you can help us by spreading the word about wink liking us on facebook and twitter and donating supplies for our supply drives that are mostly just craft supplies that we hold throughout the year you can Adopt a woman veteran and her family for the holidays are donating location space or money for retreats or meetups. Any, any of that helps. And then here's our board of directors is me as a president. Tracy Wells is our vice president from Maryland. Claire Argensinger is our treasurer and secretary at the moment. She's from Bolton. Bola is, lives in Houston and she's on our board. My sister Diana Owie is right here. She's on the board. Alexis Hightower is a board member also. And then Sequita Jackson. And Sequita and Alexis are both from Muskegon. And our community outreach coordinator is Henrietta Hadley. And she serves as our military sexual trauma specialist. Is there any questions? I have one, so tell us a little about your starting your military career so we know where your side of Thing comes from. My my side of the thing, and my sister and I are, she's Air Force veteran, I'm Army veteran. So of course you got the clashing right there. <laughs> but my, my side of it, I started, I just didn't join the military until I was 32 years old. Mm -hmm. my, my kids were 14 and 13. I joined because I wanted to move. That was the only reason I joined. And I went went and signed up and they said well if we could give you Fort Drum New York and the only thing I could think was New York City I'm like I'm gone I'm going now Fort Drum is southern Canada south of Canada by 30 miles I stayed there I deployed I was there for five years so not only did I get southern Canada I also didn't get to move I did move twice I deployed twice to Iraq 
Um, my second deployment in Iraq, I found out that I was going to come back to the States for two months and then I'm going to drill sergeant school, which was the last thing I wanted. <laughs> so I went to drill sergeant school and then I got to go to Fort Leonard Wood, which I'd already been to because that's where I did basic training in AIT. And then because my son was a senior in high school, I had to extend being a drill sergeant for a third year. So. I didn't really get to move anywhere and that was not my goal of joining the military I wanted to move everywhere <laughs> so and even my sister she joined the Air Force at 25 she was like 25 so neither of us did it right out of high school our father was in the Air Force he retired but after 10 years I was medically retired because I've had two surgeries on my back and she was retired or she was medically discharged after eight years so it's kind of neither of us had planned on getting out when we did she is the one who found wink and contacted them and had a good relationship with them and she's the one who went to camp courage and she said she's going to go to a three-day camp and i said i'm not going to that i said no way i'm not going to that i don't know anybody i don't feel comfortable i'm not going well, lo and behold, here I am the president of the board, and it's been four years, and we do tons of stuff. <laughs> Just tons of different stuff, and met so many people that we would never meet. Do you find, I have a question, actually, because I'm listening to what you're saying. Do you find uh, that it's harder for, uh, maybe you're saying that with all of this, that it's harder for women to talk to other men in who were in the military veterans because they have a different mindset or different experience i would say men in general have a different mindset and the i going to the va and stuff like that i've never experienced any problems neither as my sister but there are many of the females who say they have and i don't know if if they're personality isn't strong enough and outgoing that they let it happen or that maybe I'm just somebody who I ignore it because everybody has different experiences I've never had any issues the only issue I do have is the fact that I drive a truck I have a DV plate I am 100% disabled and I get a lot of people male and female oh is that your husband's truck and no it's not it's mine they don't own it don't have a husband so they don't own it but it just seems like that is the norm or the stigma that's put out out there is oh you're a female driving a truck that's got to be your husband's because she also drives a truck and it's got an air force plate and that's what that's the first thing anybody ever says is oh it must be your husband's truck so other than that i mean now there is some of the some of the females have big trust issues and a lot of them will do activities where it's the veteran and her caregiver be it her husband her best friend sisters like us or whoever and there there's events that the caregiver goes because we'd rather them go than and the veteran feel comfortable well at the same event there will be a female veteran who has an issue with a male and mad because the one lady's husband is there so you do get that often and it's well not that often but you do get that so i mean that kind of makes it uncomfortable a little bit but for the most part i mean what i i've been through personally i don't have any any really issues how many chapters are there a week we have um three right now ingham county kent county and us is that just Michigan or is it nationwide? That's well, we're out nationwide. Like our vice president, our vice president who's in Maryland, she's starting one out there. But they have like the women's coalition that they go and she'll go and talk to Capitol Hill. She'll go and talk to the senators and everybody else. And she goes and does that stuff. She's starting a chapter out there. It just takes a little while to get it started. Are there any. Uh statistics of how successful this has become no that is one thing we do not have that i will look into getting 
But your how long has yours been in? As um, a since twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. And it was an online presence. And in twenty seventeen, Mike Bow at the county VA. He's one of our board members. He's he spoke here before. Also. Yep. He let he was instrumental in us getting a office in there. So we're right next to them, on the same floor and everything. Do you have participation with active military? Yep. Veterans? Or they're not veterans. Yep, active women, active duty women. Yep. Okay. Now Did you say you had a organization in Texas. There, we have a board member in Texas, and she's been starting. She's been trying to start a chapter down there, also. Where? In Houston. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So, um, if somebody wants to tell somebody, or somebody needs to get involved in Wink, is it just simple as? Right online, go to Google go and, and get it in. You yep. can find it. There's people in your area. You can find there's people in your area, and it's just winkforall.com or Facebook, Wink for All. It's either place. So you said you became the president. Mm hmm. Why? <laughs> well, Zanetta Adams is the founder, and I don't know if any of you have heard of her, but she is the director of the MVAA now, the Michigan Veterans. Um, she appointed me <laughs> so it's kind of like I almost felt like well it was kind of like being told you're going to drill sergeant school you just do it <laughs> you just do you do what you're told um, because she couldn't have her hand in this because of being the director and any kind of funding they could get you know people could look at it and like oh well you know she's part of the women's veteran group but she's not but she just kind of said, well, I think you would do a good job. Well, we're not sharing confidences here, but <laughs> were there any notable stories that came out of your experience for yourself and or somebody else that was, it's worth telling people the story without mentioning names? There, we do have one female who is, um, she's been on a lot of different local things with um, Andy O'Reilly on one of them and as a personality well yeah kind of kind of like a little bit of the face of wink for a little while we used her to publicize a her too which she has nothing but positive positives to say about wink her she came out of her shell a lot because she used to be very quiet and not do anything and now she's the one who well we got to go do this we got to go do this and let's go do this so her i mean you could tell them your story you can get up here and tell them yours. Or do you have one you remember? Someone out there that you felt really benefited from getting involved in something like this who might have been close, to, you mentioned suicide, and there's a lot of suicide among veterans, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, we do. Time. We do. She wasn't, she wasn't suicide, but <laughs> she is in her 60s. She is, was just diagnosed with, what is it? Asperger's. Asperger's when she was 63. And she was lost, very, very lost. In the army. She was in the army. She was in a male-dominated profession in the army. So she was kind of, she felt like she was kicked to the curb a lot, being in the male-dominated profession, being diagnosed with Asperger's. She couldn't get a job because of it. So she started coming to our group, and she's she's benefited a lot. She has gotten... She volunteers at a local restaurant now, and she is there, I think they said 15 hours a week, which is really good because a, a lot of the females just need somewhere to go, something to do and somewhere to go. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a job because she wanted a job, but volunteering to her is just as satisfying. And my sister and I own a card making business and we actually started our business through one of our partners with wink which was the mve lab through grand valley state university so they offer business opportunities and yep. things like that oh yeah business and education because we partner with grand valley at the upward bound program we both did that we both are back in school the mve stands for the mve is michigan veterans entrepreneur lab and what they they do it's a 13-week class and they bring in 
lawyers, they bring in people from the state, they bring in um, SCORE, which is the a group in Grand Rapids that will help help you do your business plan and whatever you want to do for, for veterans or for entrepreneurial. And we did that in 2018 and they still they still offer it the veteran upward bound that is a group that you you meet like once every other month and you you just make different connections on well i want to go back to school but i'm not really decided do i want to go to grand valley do i want to stay local ferris you know just stay at mesquite community college they help you figure out a lot of that and then navigate your way through and they give you the stipend and they and they pay you for your time and your mileage of going to wherever your meeting is. Would you say you knew a percentage of possible women that were? I mean, I'm wondering how many women are maybe divorced, single, or or still married. Is is there a statistic to see? Is it worse for women who are still married? Is it worse for single women? You know, I, you know what I, I'm saying? Yeah. If I would guess, out of all the women who are in our group that are female veterans that participate on a regular basis, I almost want to say just one of them is married. Mm -hmm. So I they're finding that the pop, one of the problems is not having a, a partner or a spouse, they are kind of lost. They don't know what to do. Right. Maybe they came out of the service and they don't have their old friends. Their whole world's changed. Yep, because so, a lot of them, they'll come out of the service and their kids are older. They, they find their kids are older than their friends empty that they had. Emptiness syndrome. Yeah. And their kids are already gone, and my kids are 30 and 29. And so this runs a gamut from young people all the way up through oh, the yeah. ages. Oh, yeah. We've had, there was one young lady who was went to camp with us two years ago. She would not do a picture for nothing. She didn't, we took a group photo. She turned around backwards. She didn't want nobody taking a picture of her just for fear of what her ex-husband would do with her kids. Yeah. So it's. Now, is that because of the military or is that just because of the ex-husband? Well, I don't know, but that's what her feeling was and that's, we didn't take any pictures of her. And we have a Gail. Yep. Okay. We have, oh, sorry. Question. Do you pair up with individual veterans as far as counseling or do you offer like a 24-7? I mean, are you available to people that are mentally having issues? We, we are available to them and we had somebody who was in our office before and it was a matter of sitting with them until they got a hold of the battle creek va okay where they had the mental facility oh. and then th them coming to get her in and and taking her down there so anything after hours are you available do you still connect that way we as do far as resources and yep getting them what they need at that point point. and at that if we have somebody who we feel is like that then more than likely they will have our home phone our cell phone numbers okay because right Great. now on the card because of with covid and everything just opening back up we're yeah. getting more and more people in to volunteer for the office but we still don't have it up and running 100 percent. so you call the the phone number on the business cards and it it's a voicemail somebody will go in and check it the next day but oh, okay. it's still a voicemail okay does health west does health west participate with you or is that just a location that you have an office or a person that's participating with you? oh they participate with us we we have to do our quarterly reports we do monthly reports and quarterly reports right back to health west so they don't provide any Additional medical service. or counseling or they that's all still through the VA right. facilities. Yeah. 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 Yep. But they have their own guy who is there to help us. We don't have an office at Health West. No. Nope. Okay. We have we, our office at the Muskegon Veterans Office. Okay. Yep. We are across the hall from the Muskegon Veterans okay. facility. Over by the airport. No. No. The one that's right here, um, the old Baker College. Oh yeah. The okay. courthouse. Yep. Yeah. I know we have some local people here. We have some people who are not from the area. Um, so they're, as I said, you asked before about chapters in other areas. Yep. If they know somebody who could use the help of this, they should just go on and look for Wink and then maybe type in their state or something yeah. like that and they'll find something. And Is it, are they in most of the states? They're not in all the states and I would say no, not most of them, mm -hmm. but we're trying. 
And a lot of it is just getting somebody who will agree to have a, a presence down there or somebody who will say, you know what, I'll take over this. So people can volunteer to start one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So and people we're, looking for something to do can just do that anyway yep. and get it organized for that oh, local, yeah. local area. And even if it's just a... Yeah, business she has cards business cards. Are available the lobby. Yeah. How yeah. about the album? Can you get the album? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the CD, I'm sorry. Hey, but we, oh, sorry. Sir, did I miss it? What does WINC stand for? WINC, originally it stood, the W-I-N-C was Women Injured in Combat. But that gradually, gradually changed because not everybody was injured in combat. Not all women were. So it changed to for all women veterans. Because they always said, well, I'm not injured in combat, so I can't be part of your group. Right. Which, you don't have to be injured. You don't have to ever be in combat. We don't, it's not, that's not what it's about. Because I was never in combat. So it's about, you know, it's about just meeting, meeting other women veterans who will relate to your story. Most of them don't want to say, you know, I was a women veteran, you know, they just stay with their kids. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. like, I don't have to go out. I don't have to do anything. I can just stay here. Does the military make people aware that are coming out of the service? Of your situation, of your availability. Nope. Um, the military will do military things. Department of the Defense, who they who they partner with, who did they do stuff with? They don't. And we found out that each state has a different way of talking. Each yep. state does, like the Air Force and Army do different, oh. and each state will, you know caterized to that certain group of people that they know is a majority. And then the VA facilities, are they referral sources for you or? Yes. Okay. We have um, Dr. Jump out of Battle Creek. She is, she refers people to us. Okay. Um, who was the other one? I can't remember her name. Then um, the women veterans nurse <coughs> coordinator. Um, Petty, Yvette Petty. She also, she's like overseer of all the women's, the women's hospital they just opened in. The women's clinic. Women's clinic in, in, hospital. in Ann Arbor that okay. they opened. She's overseer of that. Okay, good. Because yep. they're just now in the last year or so, they're starting, each state is starting to get their own women's clinic. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because that's been. Yeah, it, before it didn't even happen because oh, yeah. all the gowns and everything were all sized to men. Yeah. Everything there was all sized to men. Now they're starting to get it more oh, women centered. Great. Yep. That's great. So you've been going to, since 2014. How long has this been an organization? Well, I've been going since 2017, and 2014 is when it was started and founded. And Zanetta found it because she had nobody to connect with. Is this just Michigan for her? Yes. Yeah. But nationwide. Now. Well, nationwide. She actually went to a conference in Colorado with Challenge America. And when she came back, she started Wink because she seen what they had over there. And um, she brought it and started it in 2014. And it started with, at first it was like two or three people online. And 2017 is when we got an office and it started in person. Great. Yes? Yeah, do you have information available with the DAV or the VFW halls or anything like that? So um, if somebody called them, yep. they could get information about Wink? We are, we have got it with a few of the V, the, um, the ones in Muskegon. Yeah, more of the ones in Muskegon. During Coast Guard Festival, we're going to go out to Grand Haven, and they're going to let us walk around. We met the second vice chair in Grand Haven for their VF. What was it? The American Legion. So we talked to her. It's they don't know, and I mean we don't know where every one of the chapters is, but the ones that are around here, we have gotten our cards and stuff too. And the one in Nuevo County. Yes. We have talked to a couple of them. And Oceana County or the one in Ludington. Sounds yeah. like you, you need a convention. Yeah. <laughs> right. We have oh, a brand yeah. new convention center here. Yeah. We you need should a go convention. hit them up right now. Yeah. Because I bet you there's some veterans we found through the, uh, the Silver Sides and everything. Veterans are always out there and they're always willing in whatever company they are involved in to kind of help out. Oh, and yeah. We've gotten a lot of free services because we're a nonprofit here and yep. I bet you guys could do the same thing. Oh, we do. And like 
being at bike time. We're in the veteran tent. Mm -hmm. Females stop and they're like, I didn't know there was a female veteran really? thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, nobody knows. Right. And I've, I've went on and I've asked, when we've gone to the MSG retreat we had two years ago, because nothing happened last year, but two years ago, I asked one of the women, I said, so how did you ever even find out about Wink? Mm -hmm. She was from Detroit, no, Ann Arbor. And she said, all I did is Googled free women veteran retreats. And I'm like, I would have never thought to do that. Yeah, really? Never, I would have never done it. Yeah. She said, that's all she did, she found it and she got away here and she came to it. That's great. I was like, two years ago we had was a lady from Detroit come and when we drove up, she had the windows down and she was like, listen to that. It's so quiet. <laughs> and I have a sunroof in my truck and she's like, can I just look out that? Um, she goes, there is stars. Just amazing. <laughs> just amazing because in Detroit she didn't see it. She says, so in this day and age, do you encourage the COVID vaccine? Do you have any participation with that or any no. responsibility to that? Nope, we do not. Okay. Nope. That is, for us, it's definitely yeah. personal. It's the VA. Yeah, personal opinion. Okay. The V. I mean, if the VA decides whatever, then, I mean, we still have our personal opinions. Personal choice. Yeah. Well, the, any other questions you guys can think of? I'm using the microphone. <laughs> can you hear me? Oh, another one. Yep. I want to yeah. say thank you for yeah. your service. Well, yeah, thank I was going to. Yep. Yeah. It sounds like a very good organization. So oh, I'm just is. glad I came and oh, heard yeah. what you have to say. Yeah. And hopefully there's people out there on Zoom or people who can check in and find out about it later. Oh, yeah. And our outreach coordinator, she is, she is on the ball. She is always, always out there doing stuff. And I mean, we, everywhere we go, I was in, where did I go yesterday, ever? And oh. there was a, a thing on the wall and it was a pizza restaurant I took my grandkids to. And there's a thing on the wall and there was an empty space for business cards and I stuck all my business cards in there. So mm -hmm. everywhere we go, we leave them. <laughs> That's why I don't have any now and I was getting my truck fixed and didn't have time to grab <laughs> the other stuff. So Otherwise you would have information. So is your coordinator full time? Is that, is that? No, oh, okay. she is 25 hours a week. Yeah. And that's what the grant is for right now. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is, well, I mean, we can always I mean, request it's, more. It's very tough to grow these organizations. Oh, it is. I can, I can tell you from experience, right? Yeah, <laughs> it is tough. Yeah. But it can grow. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we've gotten, we've gotten, Kent County was the last affiliate we got and they mm -hmm. came to us. Okay. So that was kind of, that was nice. Yeah. They searched us out. That's a that's a good first step. That's a great step. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> the one in Lansing, we were talking to them and one of their girls came to our Camp Courage. Yep. And she she checked us out before she decided to say anything. She checked she followed us around for probably a year and a half before she ever had any interest we never even knew she was a director of the va oh and, and she's a chaplain yeah uh. we never knew that she just followed us around and we were just like well she's everywhere that's kind of nice yeah. <laughs> but then we found out why and it's like that is amazing yeah I, I would think that the chaplains and just even churches mm -hmm. would be great places for you to do outreach because yeah. a lot of troubled people oh yeah count, count see we never that. thought the church yeah well, something that came to my mind during this whole talk that I feel horrible <laughs> I have to say this but I'm going to say it I've thanked a lot of male veterans for their service right mm -hmm. occasionally we get people they come to the desk they say they're a veteran they get a discount to come in and there are women among that and I've, I've never because a lot of times you'll get to an event we've had events here where the males will wear something oh, yeah. that says I'm a veteran and when you said that women won't admit it they don't admit it or don't identify because they don't think they deserve it well that's ter that's ridiculous yeah. <laughs> oh it is ridiculous. Yeah, because you'll have the ones who are why well, didn't I wasn't in combat but there's people sit behind desks or drive trucks that have nothing to do with the fighting and their job and is men just too, their, yeah their job is just, just as, as important, important as the one on the front lines in Iraq. You had a question? Yeah, if you talk about religious support, 
Are there any female cha chaplains in the service? Yes. Oh, sure. um, we have one who is actually a reservist, and she is the director of the Ingham County VA. She's also a member of WINK. Okay, but then how about, I mean, in, in the general mil military, are there... I guess he's oh, oh, you serving. mean I've seen one. I've seen one female chaplain. There's probably a few, but we yeah. haven't seen too many. That you know what? That I never thought about either. Is there is not that many female chaplains that I've come across. And a lot of it might be because when I served, I when I was deployed, I our job was to we supported the infantry. So it was all male dominated. I think we had 20 females with us. The only thing I could think of is that a male and a, you know, among yeah. men, they would accept that more than a, you know, a female. female. I've had, just personally, I've, I've had female doctors, I've had male doctors. Yeah. And to me, I don't know, it doesn't matter. But I would, I would think the psycholo psychological part of that is a male meeting with males, we're gonna go into combat, yep. you guys are gonna be, you know, that kind of thing, so. I'm oh yeah, sure. because even the infantry, I mean, even going, um, they were just like, oh, we have to have a female searcher with us? Really? Hmm. Well, because of the culture in Iraq, yes, you do have to have a female searcher. And nine times out of ten, you're a female and you've got your hair back. The Iraqis didn't believe you were a female, so you were taking your helmet off. Pull your hair down so that they can see you are a female. Because a lot of them didn't believe it. Well, folks, great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Give her a round of applause. Hi, Patty. We're going to probably say goodbye to you in a minute. <laughs> Patty was our one online Zoomer. That's okay. Jenny, Thank you, you for coming, Patty. Card? Yes, I'd like to. Thank you, folks. Okay, thank, thank you very, very much. much for coming.